Oi, gente, tudo bem? Bem-vindo e bem-vinda ao último episódio dessa série especial do Ash Burnham Place. Hoje eu estou com um convidado muito especial, que é o Christian, que é o responsável pela seleção do Catalyst Program. So, eu vou falar em inglês e já é bom que vocês vão treinando. Christian, welcome and thank you very much for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure, Tatiana. I'm glad we could make this happen. I know you've been trying for a while, so... Yeah, that's true. You are a busy man, Christian, but uh, I understand. <laughs> no problem. Uh, first of all, uh, the first question I have for you, Christian, is actually not a question, but a compliment. Because uh, I looked at the Ash Burnham website and it's amazing. There's like a lot of information. Everything's there. So if a, a person wants to be a volunteer, they do. Just need to go to Ash Burnham website and they will have like everything. Well yeah. done. Eh? <laughs> yeah, we're still working on a new Catalyst website. Um, wow. So uh, yeah, that'll be launched as, uh, as soon as possible. It's just that we are trialing a few different things. And before we commit them to a web page, we want uh -huh. we, we to finalize them and settle on them. So so there'll be a Catalyst website as well. But, but I know that the Ash Burnham webpage has been done and looks quite good so yeah wow well, yeah but the catalyst is also good like uh it's totally different from when i applied great because yeah there's all, everything there's even the schedule from the mondays that yeah. you guys reserved to, to the catalyst so it's it's really good, good. so uh, but for uh those of who arrived here without seeing as burnham website yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you some questions and The first one is, um, in a short explanation, Christian, uh, what is Catalyst program? What is Ash Burnham? And what the Catalyst is looking for in a volunteer? Gosh, there's three questions there. Okay, so let's start with, let's, start with, uh, let's kind of start on a macro level and then zoom in. So what is okay. Ash Burnham? Well, yeah. Ash, Burnham, Ash Burnham Place is a, a well, it wears, a few different hats, but it's a Christian conference retreat center and also a community. Um, and it's been set up since the 1960s. Um, yeah, so it, it hosts uh, groups from many different churches around the UK and even internationally. It hosts individuals who come seeking um, rest and healing and the opportunity to connect with God. Um, and increasingly, I would say, it's also a place of education whereby, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the things we're doing, for example, in the kitchen garden, we're sharing with others. Some of the, the, the theological discussions taking place are sort of, um, yeah, influencing, uh, you know, wider circles and things like that. So, so I suppose we're, we are both a space you can come and use but we're also um a space that increasingly i think seeks to shape in small ways those who come to us does that make sense yes yes of course yes it does especially for me i've been there i know <laughs> great um so you can attest to that truth you can, yeah, yeah that's true. good that's good true. so the catalyst program so the catalyst program is 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 part of what happens at Ashburn and Place in a significant part of it. And basically, it is a volunteer program uh, that, that, that takes up to 55 international volunteers, mm -hmm. or most of them for one year. They, they come and they help us to run Ashburn and Place. They also receive teaching. Um, they are invited to participate in our sort of communal rhythm of worship and prayer. They meet people from all over the world. They learn English. Um, so in summary, the Catalyst program is about, is about um, serving community and, and teaching. I think one of the mistakes that perhaps we've made in our presentation of the program, and I think volunteers frequently make is that they think the catalyst program is just the teaching element mm -hmm. the program is the entirety of the year the whole the whole kind of experience of being ashburn is the catalyst program we think it all contributes to shaping the person 
Yeah, that's true. Uh, Christian, I went to I should burn home in a totally different environment. It was like uh, COVID, um, yeah. it was closed, so we didn't have guests and anything and i actually had as she burned home just to to me i had a lot of time to connect with god because of this because mm. it was it was not like in a hurry environment and, or anything but i also uh miss the fact of course because i i, I left earlier uh yes. so i didn't have the time to connect with guests and i think this is of course part of the program and everything yeah. i had a little bit not not much yeah. uh but i saw it on the website that this moment of um being closed and everything uh shaped as well uh a new vision from the from the catalyst program yeah and i would like to ask you what has changed what what did you guys realized uh in this time that you didn't realize before yeah that's that's a great question i think um i would say that um, it gave us an opportunity to to rethink i suppose the program that we'd inherited particularly mm -hmm. me, my job changed in catalyst i i went from being more of an assistant to then managing the program and so of course i had ideas about what i thought was important and and i suppose covid gave me the opportunity to, to rethink what I thought were the priorities of the Catalyst program and discuss that with the wider leadership team and then to start to implement some of those things. So you're quite right, it has changed. I think one of the biggest changes is the way we do teaching. So okay. previously, if you came to Ashburnham before COVID, you would have chosen a stream um, or a yeah, a particular area of focus. And we 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 had three streams set up, and I, mm -hmm. the names I think were adventure and creation. Then there was um, kingdom theology, and then there was creative ministries. I think I think those were the old names of the streams. And uh -huh. basically, and basically, on your application, you would say, "Oh, okay, I want to specialize in that particular area." And so, every week, you would receive a couple of hours of teaching in an evening related mm -hmm. to the stream. Well, that, and that's fine, but the thing is, um, it seems that uh, if you were, for instance, in the creative ministry stream, you wouldn't necessarily have any interaction with um, with the theology that was being done at Ashburnham. Or yeah. if you were in the theology stream, it might be that you never had the chance to go outside and learn about the importance of, of creation and sustainability and how that relates to discipleship. Um, so I felt like volunteers were getting a bit of an imbalanced experience. Um, mm -hmm. And also I, I wanted, I, I felt like it was important that yes, while we still had time um, to specialize and the opportunity to do so, that actually there was more time spent together looking at some key themes um, related to leadership uh, and, and, and I suppose the, the priorities of Ashburn in place. So, so with that said, uh, myself and some of the leaders, ha Hannah, Andy and Paul, we sat down and we, we decided we wanted to run more of a module based system. Mm -hmm. um, and so we now, uh, the program the teaching element is basically, is right around these 10 modules. And to give you some examples of those modules, we have um, community in a rhythm of life. We have engaging with scripture. We have one on power. We have one on relationships. We have one on hospitality and evangelism. We basically, uh, we do that by um, splitting up the module into four parts. So mm -hmm. the, on the first week of the module, you can expect to be part of a big group discussion. We call this a Samoan circle, but it's basically, it's a, it's a way of having conversation and discussion and debate. Um, mm -hmm. so, so we might pose a question related to the module. For instance, if it's mm -hmm. the thing with scripture module, we might say, okay, how do we read scripture as Christians? And we will mm -hmm. put that to the whole of the volunteer group. And the way it works is there's three chairs in the middle of the circle and people will start to have a conversation about this. And other people can tap into that circle. Um, they, can, they can swap out. It's a continuous kind of flow of conversation. And um, that way, people start to think and start to be challenged 
and start to uh, engage with the module. So we do this kind of as a first week. And then the second week, we get someone from offsite who's a practitioner in the particular area. For example, again, the Engaging with Scripture module, we had Dr. Brad Jersak come in. So Dr. Brad Jersak um, is the dean of an academic theological university. He has written many books. Um, so he's, he's very much engaged still in research on this topic. So he's a fantastic speaker and he has links with Ashburn and Place. So he comes and speaks to us about the module and he does that to everybody. Then on the third week, that's when we that's when we still have this stream element. So mm -hmm. if you are interested in going deeper theologically, then you would have then you would attend the stream session for theology. Or if you wanted to look at engaging with scripture more from the perspective of an artist or musician, you might you would go along to the creative ministry aspect. And likewise, with the adventure in creation, if you wanted to, 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 to see how scripture relates to the environment, um, then you would go to that. And we actually encourage volunteers to go to all three. Um, but not, you don't have to. We say go to two out of three. Um, mm -hmm. So you still, get, you still get the opportunity focus in but it's much more it's much more broad and shared and actually we tend to do the stream talks in house so as as you'll know tati i'm sure um we have so hannah tends to do the creative ministry talks her and her husband are professional musicians her husband's mm -hmm. a recording artist hannah has you know has, has, has played and gigged all around europe so she is perfectly pitched to be able to teach on this um, yeah. I'm halfway through my master's in philosophy and theology, so I tend to do the theological element of the module, the, the stream talk, so that tends to be me. And we've recently employed um, a wonderful chap called Tim Young, who is specifically been employed at Ashburnham to uh, think about how groups and community can better engage with the land and live sustainably. So he delivers the adventure and creation talks. So, it's very, very kind of detailed. You have people who are passionate about these areas delivering the talks. And then lastly, and I know I've talked a lot here, lastly, the fourth week is a presentation week. You're put into groups, they're random groups, so you're working with different people from different streams, and mm -hmm. you present, you feed back on what you've learned, you consolidate the information that you've gathered over the three weeks, and we make it kind of a bit of a friendly competition, and there's a little prize at the end. And, and that way, people kind of, um, yeah, it's a way of concluding the module. So, so that's a huge, significant change to, to what we do. Yes, now. yes. And then we also have now what's called Community Mondays. So Ashburnham always wanted to have, I suppose, more of a day when we, were, well, when we weren't open to guests and we had chance to be together as a community. Mm -hmm. so, so for the most Mondays in the year, we have what's called a Community Monday. And really that's an opportunity to be together in a bit of a different way. So in the morning, we tend to have different activities. And again, we try and connect in a loose way to the streams. So you'll always have the opportunity to go outside and do something in the land, or you'll have the opportunity to be thinking theologically and in discussion groups or watching a, a film and, and thinking about it from a theological perspective. Um, or there'll be some opportunity to do something creative. Um, and we run things like the Enneagram courses in the mornings. And then, then we have, um, then we maybe have an English lesson or we have a volunteer meeting or we have some sort of enrichment time as a community and we'll pray and we'll eat together and then we'll go into teaching in the afternoon. So it's quite a full on day, but it's a yeah. good, really, it's a really good opportunity to be together. Yeah. So, so that's quite a big change as well. And it feels more intentional. I think before when I came to Ashburnham, I felt like the catalyst teaching felt a bit of an add on and mm -hmm. I wanted make it more central and putting it as part of community monday uh it definitely feels more intentional yeah it's amazing i i talked to jordana that is in Zinesh now and yeah. she told me a little bit about this this these changes and i said like oh i think i want to apply again <laughs> well we'd love to have you and mateus <laughs> Yeah, it would be amazing. Uh, well, actually, you already answered uh, the following questions that it was like, how is uh, the program is now and, and everything. Yeah. So, 
no no it's amazing because um i really loved what you said about making the volunteers engaged in all the the three streams because mm -hmm. for me i i had a um I had a thing with this because when I when I went there, um, we were like mandatory every week to be in grounds. It was it was called grounds, and yeah. I I never had this contact with um, nature like this, and yeah. it was really challenged for me, really challenged, and I hate it to be honest. I was <laughs> like, oh my god, I can't believe it because it was like a little bit hard, yeah, in a physical way, yeah. and. And if I could, I was always changing with Mateus. I asked him like, oh, Mateus, don't you want to go change with me? Go to grounds. I do your things. And, <laughs> but it became, it blossomed <laughs> as, you, as you were persuading him to go to the grounds team. Yeah, brilliant. But he, he enjoyed it. That's why yeah. he enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, later I, I, I started to see nature in a whole different way after I've been Nash. Today, mm -hmm. I like to be outside. I love to like see, uh, be around trees and everything. And I feel God in a different way when I am in this place. So mm -hmm. this was, uh, this was able because of Ash, because this relation that I had with nature. And I really think that it's important to come out of our comfort zones and this actually Ash, Ash does this with us it takes out, us out of our comfort zone in every level and this mm. is really nice oh that's lovely that's really lovely to hear um and i think you know it, it's it's good to remember that and um, in in covid we were sort of making it up as we went along we never had a situation whereby um we never had a situation whereby we, we you know we hadn't had guests We'd never yeah. had a situation where we, we, you know, we'd we'd had a um, a smaller, you know, such a smaller cohort of volunteers. Um, so yeah, it was it was really challenging, and, and and I really felt that challenge too. I felt like, in some respects, I was I was meant to be working, but also not meant to be working. And how did mm -hmm. that what did that mean for my responsibility to the volunteers? And yeah, oh, it was really hard for me too. Um, but yeah, um, what's <laughs> lovely to hear is that even in that, even yeah. in that. Um, you know that that you yeah that the good came out of that and you you now you know feel able to engage with nature in a, in a in a better way and i think you know that that's good news for us because we think that's really important so that's great uh, oh good i'm, I'm glad to know <laughs> yeah it's really changed it for me um okay so christian uh ashley burner receives a lot of international people uh, to be a volunteer there and this is really important to us as volunteer that goes because we we have the contact with so many different people and culture and this actually changes a lot in us yeah. and you speaking as a ship burnham uh how do you do you think that this facting can contribute to a volunteer life during and after the exchange mm. i mean how, how how do you think this because it's speaking for myself it's really changing uh, a lot but you guys as a co community and the responsible for that change how do you think this contact for the volunteer and even for Ash Burnham, because you also mm. have the contact with these volunteers from all of the world. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a really good question. I think um, living closely with other people, uh, whether they're your family or people you don't know, is always going to be inherently formational. So it's always going to shape you, um, and I suppose it can shape you in positive or negative ways but hopefully hopefully with the desire uh to uh to become more like jesus the frustrations and the joys that come with sharing uh, a space with people um yeah is 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 forming you in a good in a good way is forming in a good sense um so that's that's just that's what happens if you live with people closely anyway but now you imagine you're living with people from totally different cultures. Well, you could say that that is amplified that experience. So it's hard, um, but it is. But it's. But it's beautiful. So, so I've talked about the the, the challenge. 
but I think uh, each culture has a particular manifestation of God, I think. And so I think you learn not only about cultures, but you learn a bit more about God when you're living uh, close to people who are from mm -hmm. other places, who have a different outlook on the world and maybe a different outlook slightly on faith. So, so I think that's really good. Um, and of course, you get to benefit from all of the 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 aspects of culture that people bring. So the food that they eat, uh, you know, the the language that they speak, um, their particular outlook, and you know, those kind of things. I think, um, yeah, that's a really good positive positive thing. And I think um, not to get too uh, spiritual, but I think that the the picture of god's kingdom in fullness is one where every tribe of every tongue lives together it doesn't mean that we're all one homogenous culture and everything is flattened no it's every tribe and every tongue will still be speaking different languages we'll still we'll still manifest something different about the places we come from and i think that's that's beautiful and god wants that so i suppose in that sense ash burnham prepares you for for heaven <laughs> the fullness of god's kingdom which is a good thing um, yeah yeah i remember the the first time we spoke because mm. guys this is the second time we are recording we had a little ash internet problem <laughs> yes it is equally <laughs> equally formational <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you get over the frustration yeah but so uh the first time you said something about um oh i don't know in english if i'm going to remember that bible verse mm. where the people are building a big tower oh, yeah. Yeah. and the diversity of god in that i i thought i thought that really interesting if you could yeah sure so that so i, I suppose i was interpreting the story of the tower of babel yeah, uh, which is found in early on in Genesis, and um, I think at its root, that story is about empire and and the desire to control through the spreading of one particular outlook, one particular language, one particular culture. And what does God do in response to that? He he judges that that um, he judges that perspective, and he. He says, you know, you'll speak all different languages. And I think you see this in Pentecost. So that there is this idea that Pentecost, when the, when the spirit falls on the disciples and they speak in all these different languages, there is this sense in which Pentecost is the reversal of Babylon, mm -hmm. of that Babel story. So, sorry, Babel, of course, becomes Babylon later on. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense in which God really does desire you. Um, desire diversity unity but diversity uh, it doesn't want everyone all the same mm -hmm. uh, and so it's it, you know the kingdom of god is this rich tapestry of languages cultures and you get to experience that a little bit at ashburn amazing so christian let's to the questions that i think the potential volunteers are really crazy to know yeah. that how is the process process selective i don't know how to say work um uh, what is a good application for you and what do you think when you are selecting choosing mm. a volunteer yeah yeah good question um so i think um yeah the first thing to say is that we we want people who are serious about growing as disciples of christ so what sometimes happens actually quite a lot is that we'll get an application through and there'll be a lot of talk about wanting to get a, a charity worker visa or wanting to improve their english and then not very much you know about actual actual faith and growing in faith and so i i tend to, if you're just writing to me about your english it's unlikely that you'll be selected learning english is a good thing to do of course um but you can do this anywhere in england yeah. or around the world in america whatever you know you don't need to come to ashburner for that so yeah I, i'm definitely looking for people who are serious about pursuing god so that's the first thing to say which is probably obvious um the second thing is uh an openness to learn from others um so 
I think one of the beautiful things about Ashbone Place is it's not a monochrome community. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is it's got different colors of faith. Um, we're, we're a Christian community, but we don't all go to the same Christian church. We're not all part of the same denomination. And I think that's a good thing. So, for example, there would be some people who who identify more with the kind of charismatic evangelical paradigm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, others wouldn't. We have a Franciscan friar who helps in the grounds. Um, he's Catholic, and he 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 comes to Ashburnham in his in his robes. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> we so 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 that's that's that you know that that's a real part of our community. And you know, I would say for me, I'm very interested in the Orthodox tradition. So so that you know that continues to shape and influence me in really good and beautiful ways so so i suppose yeah um come ready to be challenged gently and maybe to yeah to to learn from from other christians i think oh, that's yeah. important. and i think that's again one of the beautiful things about our community um so so there's that um there's something about the english level so really um you know for us but also for the volunteer coming having a basic conversational level of english at least i think is important because we do have volunteers who come and don't really speak a word and unfortunately for them they spend the first two or three months just trying to catch up feeling very yeah. tired struggling and, and and it's harder to make friends because we are uh, yes an international community but we all english is our common language here so really, you need to have a basic conversational level of English, at least. Because if you're struggling with basic conversations, how are you going to sit through some teaching on theology? You know, so, so I would say, and you know, not everyone needs to know the Oxford Dictionary inside out. <laughs> but conversational English is important, I'd say. And you should somehow make that known on your application. So one thing, and Brazilians are actually quite good at this, is they often put videos with their application. And that's really helpful for me because you can get a gauge of of where of what someone's English level is like. So mm. helpful. Yeah, that's one of the the questions that they always ask when I when I was in Ash. Uh, people use because Brazilians are online. We we are online all the time. So uh, when we when, me for, for example, when I found out about Ash, the first thing I did was Instagram, and I was seeing who I, I find out Leo Barbosa because of that, because yeah. of Ash Burnham Instagram. So when I was in Ash, one of the most questions I received from Brazilians who wants to go, it was about the English. Oh, do you need to know uh, a lot about English or not? And then there's Alex. I also talked to him. Yeah, right for the podcast and I asked him about it and he said, well, if I can give an advice, I would say study yeah. <laughs> because it's hard, we suffered. So he suffered a lot, he, he told, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, in, in all fairness to Alex, so shout out to Alex, like by the end of his time, he was his English was great, but I yeah. think I probably found the first few months quite difficult just because yeah. his English level wasn't wasn't that great, you know? and and. And yeah, and whereas Leo, I think, probably was able to engage straight away. Yeah. So both of those guys would have had slightly different experiences because of that. That's true. That's true. Um, and Christian, uh, after uh, the potential volunteer <laughs> applied, how yeah. long do they need to wait to hear like a yes or no from yeah. you? That's another good question. So um, we tend to uh, tend to send out our um our letters of acceptance about or sorry emails of acceptance about three or four months before N now we do it about four months before because there are delays with visa processing yeah, yeah. So, so so yeah um so people have to sometimes wait to hear an answer and mm -hmm. the, the reason we do this is because if we accept you and then process your visa too soon um yeah, there's a few complications around the visa process. It's better to, to to do the visa sort of three months before you come. Otherwise, you end up being given a visa from the wrong date and having to leave the program early and those kind oh, of yeah. things. 
and there's it uh like two fa faces like first you'll say oh you yeah let's go to the second phase and yeah. then there's the yes yeah so so exactly there's a stage one where you basically just express an interest and then and and that also gives us an opportunity to filter out people we we think are maybe just trying to get a visa or maybe the spam or something you know we, we can filter it out at that level so and that's that's really the important part of your application where you're tr you're trying to communicate something of why you want to come to Ashburn and the kind of person you are but that's the most important part of the the application yeah amazing uh another question uh that i received is uh for, for example in my time us brazilians we needed to stay in ash for one year yeah is this is the same or change it yeah this is a, a really good question um so i would say generally speaking uh, we ask most volunteers if we can to stay for a year the program lasts for a year so so we want people to stay for the duration if possible but we know that's not always possible so there is a degree of flexibility with this mm -hmm. but what has changed and, and and this is a very recent thing is that we are trialing now no longer doing a changeover in january mm. so we're asking volunteers um we're asking volunteers to come from either september through to june or september through to september you know okay uh, got or, it or june through to june now um before brexit so I'm, t I'm giving you a whole kind of geopolitical history here of, of yeah. Ashburn is interesting because it does, you have to keep uh, on top of these things. Before Brexit, Europeans could come to Ashburnham without a visa. So mm -hmm. it, you could come for three months in the summer and it was very easy for you to come and go. Now, we're in the process at the moment of, of working out whether people can come and volunteer under a tourist arrangement without a visa for a duration like two or three months in the summer but of course that doesn't apply um really to to brazilians so much so so yeah if you're brazilian you could be expect expected to to ask to stay at least nine months but preferably for a year yeah but after we are there it's really rare who wants to leave earlier yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Because, like yeah. i i talked to jordana she she's uh six months and she's already crying I'm like oh my god it's ending there's six months left and she's already oh no <laughs> well, uh, yeah yeah well yeah I feel like it you know also it, it does take a while to settle in so if i think a year is a good time because i think you really get to know ashburn and you really get to engage with the teaching you meet people and and you give i think god plenty of space to do the work that he needs to do which is often a slow process yeah that's true so, that's true yeah so i think that's that's a that's a good amount of time okay and um the, uh, another question that i have that I, I i am curious about it because in my time you used to have a mentor mm. is this still a thing or not yeah so we we i literally today put up a sign-up sheet for mentors i'll read you the message i sent out to the community um because that will give you an idea of that will answer your question so this is something I literally just sent out before you called and it said this oh. as part of our commitment to the growth and flourishing of our volunteers we offer a mentoring service to anyone who might want to meet up one-to-one -one with one of our mentoring team this can be a great opportunity to explore those deep life questions of faith and and and, and discipleship improve your english or just get to know one of our community members a little better so if you want a mentor do sign up on the sheet so that's the scheme we do offer that um but it's not compulsory um and it's mm -hmm. a bit more um informal i suppose yes i i i asked also because of course i i also interviewed mateus uh, yes. for this and he, for him, this was like a big part of Ash Burnham. Uh, you were his mentor. And he's really like, oh, it's the best part. Christian is amazing. I love to, to talk to him and everything. And this really, yeah, this, this really was important thing to him. So yeah. that's yeah. why I asked also. <laughs> so I'm mentoring um, two people at the moment and we'll have a, probably have a third or a fourth from the new volunteers. 
And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I say, because it's quite informal, I, I say to, to, to the people, look, um, if, you, if you want to, exp you know, let's say the person's very artistic and creative and wants to explore that, well, then maybe, maybe being mentored by Hannah is a really good thing. Yeah. If you have lots of kind of deep questions around theology and spirituality, then, you know, then I, am, I love nothing more than spending time with people. So we kind of try and gauge where people are at and what they want and then assign a mentor accordingly. So, yeah, I'm glad. That's lovely to hear that Matthias benefited so much. And, and, yeah, and likewise, for me, it's a two-way process. So obviously, I, I think of Matthias very fondly. And, uh, yeah, so that's great. It's lovely to hear <laughs> uh christian how is how is the trips uh the missionary trips yeah right yeah good question um yeah because all the, all the of course yeah. in my time uh, there was like a covid and everything but now how yeah. is this yeah so um last year we did um, a kind of catalyst go light as it were and we ran two uh small trips mm -hmm. one and rehabilitation center that we have uh, links with oh. so volunteers helped serve for a few days in that environment and had a really amazing time um, and i ran a trip to a franciscan monastery or friary in the uk which does a lot of thinking around um yeah land and sustainability and also it gave volunteers an opportunity to explore um you know what what franciscan spirituality looks like so so we ran two small trips and um, we will be doing the same again this year, but we'll probably we'll, we'll do an, a third one as well. Um, but it's a bit it's a bit different. We used to do a lot more. We used to do bigger international trips, but um, there's a few reasons why we don't do that so much anymore. And and I'll give you a couple of them. Firstly, with Community Mondays, there's less time for volunteers working in teams. To take a, a group of volunteers, you know, away for ten days to Madagascar or something, that's mm -hmm. quite that's quite difficult for teams. Now that you know everybody's basically working one day less in the teams than they were, um, and we think this is a better, you know, this is a this is this is a, a good trade off. You know, yes, you might not go to travel, but you've come. A lot of people come here anyway. If yes. they've traveled, so 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 that's one reason I think why. We're not doing international trips. The other reason is, um, actually, we 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 want to be a bit more local in our mission mission outlook. Um, we don't you don't need to go around the other side of the world. There's needs everywhere, and actually, we wanted to build up some long term connections, places that we could keep going back to, that we could know we could be of assistance. Um, and you know, getting in, uh, getting on a plane and flying somewhere for ten days, we 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 want to be conscious about how we're, you know, uh, using fossil fuels and and mm -hmm. want to fly unless we have to, and we think that's important as being good stewards of the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's something Ashburnham does take seriously. So it didn't feel quite consistent with our our kind of environmental uh, credentials to be like, yeah, we'll put a load of volunteers on a flight. You know, mm -hmm. it takes a day to get there. Then there's like eight or nine days, and you come back. It's just, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, so that that isn't to say that we won't pick up international trips again. Um, uh, but we're being more selective, and we're trying to be more local. Mm -hmm. And also, lastly, we we do it a bit different. It's not compulsory. What we 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 basically put up, uh, we advertise the trips, and then people write a paragraph or or a, a letter uh, and say why they should be part of the catalyst go team because when we go to these places we want to we want to be serving them well mm -hmm. so, so if someone has actually been quite difficult um at ashburnham hasn't really kept up with the catalyst program hasn't really done serving very well has been you know difficult for the community so so we we kind of i suppose we take uh take those who are interested those who have really engaged and we go and we serve and we, we try and be useful um and we try and keep it local yeah and this is a thing about the missionary uh people like mm -hmm. i know that there's a lot of people in brazil that wants to do this this is really mm -hmm. nice but i think the first thing we need to learn uh it's to help our neighbor 
yeah before we go abroad before right. before anything like that because if we can see who is next to us mm -hmm. so how are we going to see who are far you know Totally. So this is a good thing to to people to know that if you are going to Ash Burnham, it's amazing. You're going to go abroad. You're going to have a lot of fun, meet a lot of people. But yeah. you also are going to learn to serve. And, yes. and this is good. So just go with this heart, with this yeah. prepared to. It's not like, oh, a fancy thing. I'm going to do something abroad. No, it's actually a mission. God ha is, is going to teach you a lot. So this yeah. is a good to, to go looking for yep. this and, and the whole of life is 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 missionary work you know and yeah. i think you know yeah you're 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 exactly it's it's learning to love your neighbor and yes sometimes your neighbor may well be in a far-flung country but yeah that's, more often than not your neighbor is on the doorstep and maybe your neighbor is the person that's causing you the most irritation yeah and that's true and actually god <laughs> wants you to love them and learn to love them so yeah and, and maybe i didn't emphasize this enough when we were talking about um the catalyst program you know um volunteers will spend between 26 to 32 hours actually serving in a team yes. I, i probably should have mentioned that actually um <laughs> but because that's a big part we're not a bible school sometimes people come and expect to be you know in a theology school but you know people we, we don't ask for any money you come here and we give you accommodation and food and you you help us run our community that's yeah. what we do um so we're, we're not somewhere where you raise thousands of pounds and then you're just given a whole kind of year of teaching or i mean you are given teaching throughout the year but that's not the only element of our program mm -hmm. and we think the program works well because you can you you know you don't have to be wealthy if you can get them if you can get the money for the flying visa you can come here and you you know you you don't need anything we we give you your food we give you your accommodation um, and we think this is a, a, a fair way of doing things. Why, why should it be volunteers who have a lot of money or come from wealthy backgrounds are the only ones who can travel and be part of these programs? No, we don't think this should be the case. Yeah. So, but, but you will serve and it will be challenging. And, and that's a big part of the program. Yeah. Amazing question. Amazing. <laughs> um, and what information would you consider really important for a volunteer to know before going to ASH? I know we already said a lot of things yeah. that is really important but if yeah. there's something you wanted to add or mm. it comes to your mind you like yeah. to say I yeah don't know. it's probably just re-emphasizing some of the things that we've already said so i think uh um please uh, please come with an open heart um and then that you know that's that's that can take time and and um but as i said ash burnham uh, we're, we're not just a charismatic evangelical community. There are, mm -hmm. there are people with different expressions of Christianity here. And I think that's a beautiful thing. But that will be challenging to you if all you've been told is Christianity looks like this particular form of evangelicalism. Yeah. And, and, and that isn't Christianity, actually. Christianity is, is, a, you know, is a faith that began over 2,000 years ago in the Middle East. And, you know, for, for a thousand years, there was one church. And then for 1,500 years, there was two. There was the East, Eastern Orthodoxy, and then there was Catholicism. And then, you know, so, the, so like, yeah, Christianity is not just evangelicalism. And I mm -hmm. think we, we, we want to introduce people to the breadth of tradition in Christianity here. So mm -hmm. please, yeah, like, don't be alarmed if there are sometimes liturgy in prayers. Um, don't be alarmed if you see a Franciscan brother walking around in his habit, in his robes. That's what makes yeah. Ashburn and beautiful. All of those different parts. So, so come with an open heart. Um, come ready to serve. Yeah, as I said, so just I, as I said in the last point, you know, uh, you will. It is hard work, uh, um, certainly at times, and it's a busy place. Um, but we think that you know that's. That can be a really great way of meeting Jesus, of learning to to, to love, you know, the other in sometimes frustrating, mm -hmm. difficult circumstances. Um, I read literally today something by Brother Lawrence. Brother Lawrence uh, wrote a book um, called Practicing the Presence of God, and he was he was a monk who worked in a kitchen all of his life, and mm -hmm. he talks about finding God amongst the pots and the pans. And I think if you can find God amongst the pots and the pans in a kitchen, or cleaning toilets and making beds in the house team, then, you know, you're, you're, you're onto something good there. You know, 
God is in all things and everywhere. And if you can find him and, 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 and uh, yeah, attend to his presence in really boring places, then you'll, you know, your, your life will start to look different. Yeah. There's a book that I read about it. I read, no, I listened into it when I was last year, when I was driving to work, I, yeah. put, I put this book to, for me to listen. And it was called, I don't know in English, I probably the same name, but, uh, liturgy the liturgy i don't know from the ordinary something yeah, like that right by tish yes tish warren I yeah bought, yeah that's one. i bought my wife that book absolutely but that's it that's it's in the ordinary moments that we yes. are most shaped and learn how to walk as jesus walks so so that's going to be a big part of it it it's not always gonna gonna be exciting um it's gonna be good Goodness and ex goodness and exciting are, are different things. It's always yeah. good. It'll be challenging, but it won't always be exciting. So, so that's a big part of it. Come ready to serve. Um, yeah, and it's life, yeah. right? There's days that oh. for you, you are living a a dream. Like for me, it was like living abroad. It was living a dream and everything, but mm. it was still life. There was day that I would wake up and I I was feeling tired. I would have some kind of trouble and. It's it's life. You you need to to be ready for that. Don't don't go expecting that every day is gonna be woohoo because oh, really? it's not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and then also come ready to be surprised by God. I think I think um, uh, and and it's partly related to the the two points I just shared. So the fact that we are a community that has a diversity of Christian expression. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you said yourself, Tati, that that actually for you creation has become a means of. Of, of God communicating his presence to you and I think yes that's that's definitely true and, and that's that's a great example so come ready to be to be surprised by by God um yeah, yeah I think I think uh I think those three things probably <laughs> okay uh Christian another question that I would like to ask you is about relationships in Ashley Burnham Place um I know that it's not encouraged uh it's, but sometimes happens i am example of that uh and i would like to know how is this things how you guys deal with this how is the vision and i don't know how is the rule how yeah good question well um relationships are definitely encouraged in ashburnham but but not romantic <laughs> relationships and there's several reasons for that um mostly it's about protecting uh, the volunteers because um so many times um we've we've seen people get into romantic exclusive relationships and then what happens is their whole experience of ash burnham is is tainted by this particularly because so often these same relationships um break down mm -hmm. sometimes well quite often they break down within community and that creates all sorts of fallout, all sorts of pastoral things to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I would say still quite a significant number who then extend beyond community, then break up quite soon after community. Because, you know, Ashburnham um, is a unique setting. Um, I, don't like, I don't like it when people say that Ashburnham isn't the real world, because I think mm -hmm. well, in some respects, Ashburnham is, is, is more real in the sense that it, it is serious about faith and community. And I think that is ultimate reality. So I think Ashburnham in some respects is more real than, than not, but um, I recognize that it's a unique setting and I think it's quite intense. And so people form in uh, relationships very, very quickly. And it doesn't necessarily prepare them for, you know, long distance relationships beyond that. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's quite, a, I suppose, an unusual setting. Um, so when people return home, you know, they, they don't have the inclination or energy to continue relationships. So anyway, we found that, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's unhelpful. And it's actually quite freeing for young people to come to a place as singles and not have to spend energy thinking about who am I going to get you know, who am mm -hmm. I going to get this relationship with? Who am I going to try and impress? Actually, no, that's that's quite a burden. And we want yes. you to come and we want you to um, first and foremost experience, um, you know, the love of God and, and community. So, 
yes, it's true that I remember the conversations. It's mm -hmm. true that you and you and Matthias, uh, something was initiated in community. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, in all fairness to you guys, you were pretty respectful of the boundaries. Um, and also, it was during COVID, so um, we we had we had less resources to be able to, I think, articulate what our position was. Um, mm -hmm. Now we're no longer in COVID. We do have a strict relationship or non-exclusive relationship policy. And actually, before anyone comes to Ashburnham, they'll be sent this policy with a video link to watch our videos to help them understand exactly what we mean by this. And they'll have to sign it. And if they don't adhere to this, then we will speak to them. And if it's a continual problem, they may even be asked to go home, which maybe sounds quite strict. But we found that actually, because, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of young people all together from different places. Of course, you're going to be attracted to people. Of course, you're going to have, you know, friendships that you're going to want to pursue. But mm -hmm. almost, you know, almost 100% of the time, people that respect the boundaries, people that put in friendships first, that are committed to our relationship policy, and actually they're the relationships that stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there is no better foundation for a long-term relationship than friendship yeah and friendship should always be i think you know it is something that um is conducted around others it's not just an exclusive me you thing so yeah. does that answer the question yes of course of course right. <laughs> it was amazing yeah that's true because um you have a lot of time to figure out you and the person after I should yeah. burn home, but you, the person in a community, yeah. this is a rare moment. So it's good to be around people, not just you in the person. Definitely. Yeah. And I think community keeps you accountable as well in, in ways that, you know, one to one relationships do not. I think you can pretend and you can hide away um, a little bit if, you know, if you're in community, I think you, you're going to get pushed and you're going to get challenged and so you can't pretend i think it's hard in community yes um so that's why we really encourage these kind of friendships but you know yeah in a communal setting yeah. okay uh the last question uh because uh, it was this is like my my friend asked me because she's thinking to apply yes. uh and i thought very nice the question she asked me to ask you <laughs> what yes. is the legacy that you guys as Ash Burnham want to leave in the volunteers that serve in Ash? Mm, gosh, yeah, well, that's a good question. Deep, it's a deep question. Deep. Yeah, I, <laughs> okay, so I think different people would answer that differently because I think we're all here at Ash Burnham the staff because, you know, on the on the mission statement of Ash Burnham that we, we have to present to the Charities Commission, you know, Ashburnham is, is, is a charity that exists to extend the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and so, you know, that will look like um, slightly different for different people. So, for instance, um, if you if you were to speak to Tim, Tim would say, well, I really want the volunteers to leave Ashburnham with a real understanding of how important it is to care and love for creation. Mm -hmm. um, and would say that that would be part of the legacy and i would say yes i think that's 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 definitely something that i would love for me i think uh what i what i want is i i i want i want all volunteers to come away from ashburnham knowing the faith a bit better so what it means to be a christian and again i've i've alluded to this a little bit earlier on mm -hmm. but christianity did not begin you know a couple hundred years ago when evangelical evangelicalism emerged as a movement um, I mean, not even a couple of hundred years ago, less than that. Christianity is this deep, ancient tradition that, that, that you know, that began 2000 years ago, that was soaked in Jewish culture, that, that kind of uh, used Greek philosophy to kind of develop its teaching. It's, it's this beautiful, broad tradition, you know, uh, and I want people to have a better understanding of that, because I think ultimately we need an understanding of that in order to be Christians faithfully in today's world. Um, yeah, so I, 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 so that would be, yeah, my, my desire would be that, you know, the faith better to which you're a part of, which mm -hmm. is actually about knowing Christ. Um, and, um, yeah, I think. 
<laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good. Le- that's a pretty good legacy, isn't it? I, I, I yes. I, I do think that um, being able to see. I think Paul talks about this. Them having the mind of Christ. I think if you can, if you can start to see God in the face of your roommate who's really annoying you, in, in the, you know, in the mundane tasks of beds, in someone who has a different expression of faith to you, then I think you're 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 you're, you're going to go out into the world and 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 be a person of good news. I think. I think yeah. we we need Christians like that. Um, That's true. So that would be my probably what i what i hope for yeah um christian before we end the uh this i just would like mm-hmm. to say that um ash really changed my life and uh i really i want to say thank you for for being like available for this job for like teaching us a little bit and i also want to say that who is thinking to go just go with a really open heart and and there's one thing we say a lot here is that you can go to ash and come out to like the same person if you want if yeah. you just don't open your heart or don't don't change your point of view and these things but if you really want it you can like be transformed and yeah. i've been there only for f- four months and my life has completely changed mm. in a lot of ways and this is the thing i want to say thank you also for being here for you know being available oh, and gosh. it was really really nice to to have you here thank well, you very much <laughs> and talking, talking to you tatiana and answering these answering these questions also reminds me of why i do what i do you know because yeah, yes. we all have those days, especially in January in, in England, where it's cold and it's a bit grey, and we're thinking, yeah. you know, is this making a difference is this. And just hearing hearing your encouragement is a real blessing to me. So thank you. Um, no, it's amazing. You're, you're absolutely right. You, you, yeah. If you come with an open heart, you will meet God here. Um, but equally, if you, if you, yeah, if you come and you stay closed and you don't engage, then yeah, then you you may pass through Ashburnham having not really been changed and. Yeah. Yes, that's a really good point. Thank you for saying that. Oh, thank you, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, gente, eu acabo aqui esse último episódio. Muito obrigado para quem ouviu até aqui. Uh, quem ouviu e não entendeu inglês, escuta de novo e vamos praticar para você ir para o Burnham falando tudo. Um beijo e até a próxima.